what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this is the 16 February 2023 build and from the last time I have made a video on the Evolution X ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro it has received almost like 15 updates the updates has been very frequent but there are a lot of changes because sometimes there were some bugs minor bugs I would say like where 4k 60fps was not working with the Leica camera and stuff but here all of those bugs has been fixed if you don't know how to flash this from you can check out the description and here is the change log for this particular build as you can see it shows switch to Leica MIUI camera version more features and more modes and we have this enable ultra low latency mode and stuff fixed 24-bit audio playback and the other changes you can see from right here there is also audio codec changes here it shows it has this 16-bit sample rate for aptX offloading and stuff all these technical things but yeah the overall stability and experience i have to say this is amazing experience in the about section this is how it looks like we have the evolution x logo up top still and the android version shows as android 13 of course evolution x version at 7.6.1 and adobo is the code name of this particular version and this is for Rafael or Redmi K20 Pro. The security patch here is latest of February 5th, 2023. The stock kernel here is the 4.14 Soviet star and we have the 16th February 2023 build. In the system settings, we still have a system updater and stuff and there is the USB configuration separately. So this is very convenient for someone who uses it. And in the gestures, we still have these always on fingerprint and stuff. So I broke screenshot, press and hold power button for power menu or assistant. And we have this double tap to pulse notification, double tap to check phone, one handed mode and stuff. All of these things are working perfectly fine. You should not worry about anything. In the gesture settings, we are still getting the pill length, pill radius customization. We have this back gesture animation. Swipe to invoke assistant and the left edge, right edge customization. Everything is there. Let me go back. There is also the two button and three button navigation if you want to use that. Also, there is the back tap and you can customize it however you want. In the customization settings, I don't have to mention it because I have shown you guys this customizations multiple times and this ROM has amazing amount of customizations. You should not worry about anything at all. There is the unlimited Google photo storage and the higher FPS in games, Netflix poof. Pulse music, visualizer and stuff, volume panel timeout, all these things are there like the ignore secure flags and we have this wake lock blocker, alarm blocker and the USB configuration is there again. Two step icon, show CPU info, etc. options. Even we have the game space, smart pixels and the launch music up on headset connect, everything is there and the lock screen we of course have the UDFPS customization. There are the fingerprint scanner icons, plethora of icons you are getting right here and we have even more animations if you are noticing plethora of animations for the fingerprint scanner unlocking animations lock screen charging info everything is customizable and even the shortcut right now is customizable there is the home and you can also change it to camera on the right shortcut or if you want to go to the flashlight shortcut you can definitely do that on the lock screen yeah if you tap here the flashlight turns on and if you tap here i have to unlock the device and after that it is prompting me to use a camera so this is great that you can customize these many options you can see from right here. Also the clock font style from the themes you can actually change from right here. And I have been using it with this one but you have plethora of other options if you want to choose from these. By the way the always on display definitely looks dope in my opinion. And this is gonna definitely grab people's eyes if you are using always on display on the streets or on a cafe or something. So yeah this is a definitely unique looking lock screen clock font. And of course the Android 13 offers this bigger kind of lock screen clock that definitely looks beautiful. Right now let me talk about the home screen. Well this is how it looks like. We still have the Evolution X launcher as you can see and in the settings of it we have this mask settings and stuff. Then in the suggestions we have this disabling option. In the recents we have the memory info, background opacity, scroll vibration and the screenshot lens and the clear all option. And in the recents panel this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot lens and the clear all. Also the RAM status shows up on the bottom if you want to take a look at that. In the app drawer we still get these amount of customization and in the home screen we have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen while we are scrolling and zooming at a glance and the other customizations that you are seeing from the screen. Let me go back even the font size, icon size etc you can customize. Now of course double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is working flawlessly and even the fingerprint scanner speed if you want to see that right now. I'll show you that for the time being and yeah it is working perfectly fine you should not worry about the fingerprint scanner speed i have been using it with this animation guys and it definitely unlocks pretty fast 
and the experience overall is really good and by the way i have been using the whole rom with the 102 hertz it is not a problem at all for me but let me tell you if you have replaced your display don't overclock the display or i would say don't just switch the refresh rate but otherwise you can add this quick toggle with that you can actually change the refresh rate up to 102 hertz from 60 hertz yes the colors does shift a little bit right now but it is normal in my opinion with any display that you will overclock the colors will shift a little bit and overall the rom smoothness and stuff is just buttery smooth experience no issues whatsoever with the animations and stuff with 102 hertz everywhere you just see smoothness on this particular rom while opening apps or something it's just very smooth experience talking about the widgets yes there is the battery widget that i have added the phone's battery opens up and even the bluetooth battery opens up no issues and even the weather widget the clock widget everything is working fine so no issues whatsoever with this launcher to the left we have the google's discover page swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will get you to the quick settings panel and here even in the light theme of course the quick setting panel still stays dark this is the pixel kind of thing i would say and here let me show you the toggles that i have added i have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle of course the bluetooth battery shows up on the status bar and we have the flashlight dark theme auto rate night light screen recording is also there there is the hevc and stuff this device audio and microphone audio at the same time for the screen recording and the other customizations are still there no worries and we have the battery saver do not disturb google home controls data saver hotspot nearby share sound toggle and the reboot toggle is also there ambient display anti-flicker always on display toggle heads up and the refresh rate screencast airplane mode one-handed mode in the next we have this fps info now with this fps info toggle i like this that the fps shows up like this it is a really unique looking if tab over here for the fps only so that definitely looks beautiful in the battery settings i definitely like this because we still have the design battery capacity current battery capacity and the charging cycles so that's really good i have a new battery that's why you're seeing this only has the 41 cycles and the temperature also shows up there is a battery optimization and the charge warning smart charging etc options and we have the aqua battery app because i have been testing the battery life with that well here it's not showing that much but i would say the battery life has been good enough for me i did not have any issues six hours or seven hours of screen on time you can definitely get with this but yeah this is not proper data in my opinion it will definitely give you seven hours of screen on time overall and the screen off or the standby time you can see it shows that it's nine days more than a week of standby and even we have the combined use above three days so definitely the battery life that i have been getting is really good but then again i have to say that i have replaced the battery this is a new battery that's why i have been getting amazing battery life and even my battery health you can see it's about 98 percent and the fast charging is also working fine you should not worry about it let's talk about the stock camera well you are getting the leica camera right out of the box this is insane and we have the all the lenses and stuff working fine like the 0.66 or the ultra wide angle lens is working fine and it is very optimized in my opinion so for the video settings you will get amazing amount of resolution and fps as you can see up to 4k 60 fps is supported that's just huge Yes, if you shoot continuous 4K60, the phone will definitely get hot, but that's just normal for 4K60. And there is the documents mode, the pro mode, everything is there. Even there is the video mode for pro mode. You can control the white balance, the focus, shutter speed, ISO, everything. And even with that, you can shoot up to 4K60 FPS. And if you swipe up, I have this thing to swipe up. You can change it from the settings. But right now we do get the short video, panorama, vlog mode, vlog pro mode. The slow motion time lapse sticker avatars and the movie effects long exposure multicam clone and the scanner every option is working perfectly fine even in the slow motion let me actually show you if i go into the 1080 and the 960 fps yes it is working fine it's not freezing the camera or something so this is great we have all these modes are working fine and there is the vlog mode and plethora of vlog modes you can choose from right here so this is insane in my opinion let me show you the portrait mode is there too and even if i take a front camera selfie let me just do that as you can see the front camera portrait selfie has came out to be really good two led tube lights in the background that's why it is completely overexposed if you just tap to focus it's perfectly fine photo in my opinion and even the background blur has worked properly and again this is a 20 megapixel selfie because this phone has a 20 megapixel front camera so yeah everything is working fine no issues whatsoever with this particular leica camera and of course you have multiple amount of customization like this palm shutter voice shutter everything and in the settings you will get again plethora of amount of options and you can just customize it however you want to in the sound and vibration settings you should be pretty familiar with it and this is how the volume panel looks like you can expand the volume panel and change the output device if you want from right here and of course we have this vibration in haptics and if you scroll down more here we have the per app volume control dial pad tones in call notifications screen locking sound charging sound etc options 
and we do have the me sound enhancer and it shows this Dirac logo right here and this actually looks beautiful and in the youth edition and stuff the sound quality with your headphone jack has been amazing we have this hi-fi audio option and the smart scene mode then even the preset option you can actually customize from right here let me go back we have this haptic feedback intensity customization so you can do that from right here even we have a clear speaker option right here silent and media mute option is there so you can customize that let me go back we have this wallpapers and styles in here you can change the wallpapers but i have been using a fresh walls apps wallpaper i guess and you can change it from right here there is the stock evolution x wallpaper this one but there is also the paper sap with the evolution x wallpapers and the 16 colors are there for the wallpaper and the basic colors they definitely look beautiful if you change them and we have the dark theme themed icons and the custom themed icons etc and the font and stuff is there plethora of fonts are there even the customization in the theme settings you will get these so yeah definitely a huge amount of customization is there in this room in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness and the extra dim feature is also there in the lock screen if you scroll down more we have this advanced settings and in here we do have this pickup option too if you want to use that pulse notification on and i'll just enable that for the time being i'll just display the always on display but yeah there is the other options like the always on fingerprint and the ambient display ambient music ticker double line clock control from lock device for the google home controls if you scroll down more, we have this screen timer and stuff. You can change it up to 30 minutes. Pocket detection is there. The dark theme you can customize. Of course, there is a pitch black if you enable dark theme. And we have the wallpaper zoom effect. Live display is there. There is the anti flicker and the reading mode. Also, we have this outdoor bright sun mode if you want to customize that or enable that. Let me go back. We have the colors. You can change it to boosted, saturated, adaptive, and you can also control the RGB of the screen. We have this allow window level blurs and the auto red screen. Also, there is the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can customize from right here. And we have this low power refresh rate too. I suggest you use the low power refresh rate to 60 Hz only because when you enable the battery saver, you are in a need of saving battery. So it will save battery with 60 Hz. And again, we have the prevent accidental wake up, wake up on plug. Even we have this refresh rate per app. So you can choose particular apps to be in a certain refresh rate like 60 or 90 Hertz. In the settings of the security, we have the quick unlock and there is the face unlock and fingerprint option. And in the more settings, you will get the app lock. And with the app lock, you will get the Google photos and stuff. And with that, we have this relax notification and the hide from launcher options if you want to enable even more settings. But yeah, we have the app lock working perfectly fine. I'll show you that right now. But again, let me show you by just double tapping, I can lock the device. And here, if I put this thing on the desk, as you can see, the pickup gesture actually is working perfectly fine. And again, with that, the fingerprint scanner is working fine. And right now, let me show you the face unlock. And I just double tap to wake up the screen. And if I just swipe up, and as you can see, face unlock is working perfectly fine. So your face unlock works fine. Let me show you the app lock and with that here. Okay, so sometimes it was showing not able to unlock. No idea why it was doing that, but let me show you one more time. Okay, so right now, as you can see, the app lock has worked perfectly fine. No issues. Talking about general things, yes, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So you do not need to worry about banking apps. They are working perfectly fine. The DNM Info stays as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in DNA TP. And in Google Photos, this device is detected as a pixel. So you can get unlimited Google Photos backup. You do not need to worry about that. And if you want to see the benchmarks and the whole device performance, in my opinion, is great. And in terms of the Android and Geekbench score, I am showing you the latest Geekbench 6 scores, guys. And these are the benchmarks of this particular build. In my opinion, for daily driving, this is one of the best ROM still date for the Redmi K20 Pro. That's again, in my frank opinion, your opinion may vary. And let me in the comments, what do you guys think about it? This ROM has 102 Hz refresh rate. This ROM has light camera right out of the box. This ROM has plethora amount of customizations that you can use in daily driving. And you can definitely not match all of these things with any other ROM. In my frank opinion, even the battery life is decent. Vault calls and stuff should be working fine if you insert a Vault enabled SIM card. So yeah, Evolution X is again one of the best ROMs for the Redmi K20 Pro, at least in my experience that I can say. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest build of Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro and how it's working. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet guys. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.